Every year, industry in America generates roughly 400 million metric tons of waste. Scientists have started talking about a great Pacific garbage patch that floats in the upper levels of the Pacific Ocean. In 1999, samples were taken from this area that showed the mass of plastic often exceeding that of zooplankton, the dominant animal life form in the area, by a factor of six. Currently there are over 3,000 active landfills in America and over 10,000 old municipal landfills. Childhood obesity is approximately 17 percent for 12 and a half million children ages 2 through 19 according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Most of us know what we can do, at least for the environment. Reduce, reuse, recycle, the three R's. This works on a micro as well as a macro scale. But, similar to what nonprofits call donor fatigue, it's not too difficult to lose sight of the hope in our efforts to become better stewards of God's creation. In the Republic, Plato argues that for any society to truly flourish, a firm moral sense must be cultivated among each citizen. In other words, it wouldn't be enough to know what is right and wrong. Flourishing societies are marked by creativity, zest, and an energy to go beyond the normal obligations. So instead of investigating how we might better reduce, reuse, and recycle, it is important, especially as people of faith, to take a few minutes to remind ourselves of the ultimate goal of this work, which in many ways must include beauty. We shouldn't just want a clean earth, we want a beautiful one, a dazzling one. For Thomas Aquinas, 13th century Dominican, God is both being itself, but also beauty itself. Just as all things receive their existence from God, so too all things share in different ways His essential beauty. Creation, then, serves as both an analogy of being as well as an analogy of beauty. And here Aquinas says beauty has three qualities, right proportion, good completeness, and then brightness. So first, proportio, a right relationship, could be exemplified by a physical body where all the limbs are proportionally shaped. Or with friendships, we could say the most beautiful are the ones that most perfectly reflect the Trinity, God as co-relational and self-giving love. We could even talk about spiritual beauty of words or actions as being well formed. So in terms of creation, the goal is to be in proportion to our own being, but also to the composing parts around us. So the question then, are there aspects of our creation that are out of proportion right now? Secondly, integrity or integritas, has to do with a thing's or a person's completeness. So this requires two things. First, a thing must have all it needs to make up its own substance. So dogs would normally have four legs and a tail, or humans would normally be able to walk on their back legs and use their arms for carrying. But the second part of completeness has to do with a thing's purpose. Why is it here? A musician might meet this criteria when he or she plays a well-practiced piece. Bees do this when they pollinate the sunflowers in the summer. Could we say this, though, for all parts of our earth? That each one is complete in itself and in its greater function? The third quality of beauty that St. Thomas talks about is a result of the first two, namely whether or not a thing is bright, or having to do with its brilliance. So how does something shine in its existence? Well, if a thing is in right relationship to itself and to others, and if it's in complete in itself and others, that satisfy the first two, then it'll naturally just shine. You can think of a person who might be content with their work, and their family is doing well, will probably exude a greater existential glow 
than someone who's been maybe unemployed or divorced for many years, someone that life is not going as well for. Their brilliance may not shine as much. And whenever we reach greater approximations that God has intended for us, we can't help but grow in brightness. So again, in terms of creation, is everything bright? Or what are the dark areas of creation that we're trying to hide, that are not brilliant, that we're not proud of? So again, while it is our imperative to take care of creation out of duty and respect, our goal should in at least some ways reflect our constant quest for that which is best of all, God, beauty as God would want it, displayed in and through our creation, a proportional, complete, and brightly shining earth.